I'm really not concerned about fixing this right now, but as you can see, we've created a series of code coverage results. If we want to do edge cases, we will test for every edge case. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and show you what I come up with and run it one more time. Okay, <clears throat> so now I've created all of my main edge cases. Remember, 60, if it's not your birthday, and 61, which I forgot to put in there because that is an edge. All right, so you're looking at all the edges. 61, if it's not your birthday, should be 500. Like so, put a comma there. All right, so what we see here, the edge is if it's 60, no ticket, regardless of your birthday or not. 61, you get a ticket if it's not your birthday, um, which we should also do a 61. And so we'll do this, we'll put a 61, one, zero. Again, it's another edge case, because we're right at one, but if it's your birthday, you shouldn't get a fine. We look at 65, it's an edge for if it's your birthday or not. So if it's not your birthday, it's 500. If it is, it should still be zero. But then 66 becomes an edge if it's your birthday. Okay, 75 is part of code coverage. We leave that there. We do 80, that's the next range. 80, if it's over 80, we jump. So at 80, we don't. So we pick the edge. 81 is a jump, so it should be 1,000. Unless it's your birthday. So we throw that in there. So where it does make a difference is if it's 86 and it's your birthday. So at that point, we should go to 1,000. And then we got 90 part of code coverage. Now, we could add more tests. And one of the things you do in test-driven development is you try to find out what are some other ways this can go wrong. So let's say you're trying to make your code really good where you shouldn't get any negative values. Well, you're going to want to test for that. And then you're going to want to write your code so that it succeeds. Now, I'm going to go ahead and fix my code and run it. Um, and I'll fix it in a couple stages. All I really want you to see is the, the way I test it out and run it. And I'm not even gonna focus on the got speeding code anyway. Okay, I made one change to my code and I'm gonna run the test again, okay? We're gonna run it. And we have a failure, okay? So we get some things working right. Where birthday, oh, wait a minute, if you look here, Birthday zero, birthday zero, birthday zero. As soon as we introduce, is it your birthday, we get a fine. So now I need to go back and change my code to try to fix it. So I'm gonna pause while I do that. Okay, so let's say I made a change. I tried to account for whether it's your birthday or not. So I run it again. I get another failure. Again, it's at the same point. Um, so, oh, I probably did it wrong. So I'm gonna go back and fix it. So I make my change of the code and I run it again. And now look, zero failures, runs, one of one. Now that meant an assert equals. It's kind of interesting that counts as one run. And then when I'm done, I can see all of my actual results match. Now I did it as output. Um, and, and the nice thing is that the assert equals is kind of like even better than my output. But the output was handy for identifying where the, where the break was. There are other ways to do test-driven development. But as you can see, we've written test cases for all of our code coverage as well as our edge cases. And so we are well on our way to be testing out our code and finding out if it's solid or not. Unit testing using JUnit. Thank you very much. I hope you uh, are able to use this to help you out.